Hey guys, how do you defeat a dangerous enemy? Let me read something for you very quick and then I'll continue with the video. If you've ever played sports, you know the importance of a scouting report. Knowing what an opponent is likely to do helps you prepare a successful game plan. In warfare, where the stakes are much higher, spies risk their lives to provide intelligence on an enemy's plans. Peter gave reborn Christians a scouting report on our enemy in the passage above. And that is 1 Peter 5 verse 8. Be of sober spirit, be on the alert. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. So Peter gave reborn Christians a scouting report on our enemy in the passage above. Giving us key intelligence about Satan is one way God equips us for spiritual battle. Paul warned that Satan tries to take advantage of people. But then Paul said, we are not ignorant of his schemes. This is from my book, Bold Pursuit, a 90-day devotional for men seeking the heart of God. There's a lot more in there. But in today's video, I want to focus more on what Jesus said. Five facts that he gave us about the enemy, Satan. Because Peter gave us advice, even James, he said in James 4 verse 7, Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Jesus also gave us intelligence about Satan. Why? Just because he felt like it for no reason? Of course not. He gave us facts about Satan that we can use, that we need to use in warfare, spiritual battle. Let's take a look at the first thing Jesus said. John 8 verse 44. You are of your father, the devil, and your will is to do your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks out of his own character for he is a liar and the father of lies. So here Jesus warns us and he tells us that the devil is a murderer and that he is the father of lies. You cannot trust the devil or the evil people he works through. Today, it is extremely hard to know the truth when you watch the news, listen to speeches in school and university and watch entertainment. The devil has been working extremely hard in this last few decades just to convince people what they think is normal or good because he wants them to believe that what is truly good is evil and what is evil is good, mostly through governments, the education system and entertainment. You can just watch Netflix, Disney or any other streaming device and see how most shows are trying to show evil as if it's cool or normal, cussing, witchcraft, using God's name in vain, sex and nudity and violence, and even a lot of shows these days trying to show thieves as smart and cool, getting away with stealing a lot of money. When I was younger, when I grew up, I mean, there were a lot of shows that showed people of good character, men and women of integrity. That was the good shows that, that we looked at. And we, we had role models. Today, oh, I feel terrible for kids who are growing up in the world we live in today. Then even changing everything that was for us good or kind of okay to extremely evil. Just think about Barbie, the movie that came out. And they know it will work because, wow, it's Barbie. We used to play with Barbie and I want to take my daughter to watch it. And when you sit there, it's PG-13. And I wouldn't even utter all the things that they showed in there that is ungodly, brainwashing your kids. Jesus said, the devil is a murderer. He was a murderer from the beginning and he is full of lies. He is the father of lies. There is no truth in him. What else does Jesus say? He says, the devil wants to kill and destroy us. John 10 verse 10, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Satan already lost. 
Jesus Christ died on the cross. He set us free. He rose from the grave and he is already victorious. And a lot of Christians are not living as if that is true. They're living and being deceived by the devil to complain and moan and the world is too tough. Forgetting that we are also victorious through Jesus Christ. The devil is walking around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. He wants to destroy us. He wants to bring as many people with him into hell. And let me say this, because Satanists and the Illuminati are the most brainwashed because they think that the devil is good. I talked about the woman who was called the wife of the devil, the big Satanist in my testimony. When she first saw Satan, he appeared to her as a handsome man. Only later, she saw him for what he truly was, a monster. And then she wanted to run away and believe in God. They groomed her to be a Satanist from a young age. So she didn't really understand the things of God. But once she saw the light, she wanted to run from the darkness with everything in her. The devil is evil. Full stop. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 11 verse 14, and no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. Now, a little bit earlier, I said um, the devil is evil and also a lot of the evil people he works through. But it's not 100% correct. I just want you to fully understand and not misunderstand me here. We all have a sinful nature in us that is evil. But... The word of God says that our fight is not against flesh and blood, not against each other, but against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places, against the devil and his demons. They are influencing this world. And most of the evil that you see is caused by Satan. And that is why Jesus also says that Satan is not a evil one. He is the evil one. He is the enemy. The weeds are the sons of the evil one. And the enemy who sowed them is the devil. Let me read this to you because this is important. This story that Jesus tells is the story of mankind and what will happen to us through all generations. And you are part of this story. Verse 36. Then he left the crowds and went into the house and his disciples came to him saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, the one who sows the good seed is the son of man. That is Jesus. The field is the world and the good seed is the sons of the kingdom. The weeds are the sons of the evil one and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age and the reapers are the angels. Just as the weeds are gathered and burned with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send His angels and they will gather out of His kingdom all causes of sin and law breakers and throw them into the fiery furnace. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. He who has ears, let him hear. This world is only temporary and all of us are basically just here to make our decision to choose the darkness or the light. And the devil will do everything and anything he can to distract us, to deceive us, to lie, to bring us with him into hell. And one of the greatest lies is the lie that he does not exist. He wants you to think he is not real. And in so doing, distracting you by all the things in this temporary world, that this temporary world is everything to you. And you're not even thinking about where you will go when you die. Where will you go if you die today? Hebrews 9 verse 27 says, And just as it is appointed for man to die once, and after that comes judgment. Are you ready to meet God? Or have you been distracted by the evil one that is working behind the scenes of this world with all its evil? 1 John 3 verse 4 says, Everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is 
Lawlessness. Are you a sinner? Are you still lost? Because if you are, there's good news. Because this is why Jesus appeared. This is why He came. You know that He appeared in order to take away sins. And in Him there is no sin. No one who abides in Him keeps on sinning. No one who keeps on sinning has either seen Him or known Him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous, as he is righteous. Whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil, for the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. That is why Jesus came, to set us free, to save us. And He warned us about the devil. In this video so far, I told you four things that Jesus said about the devil. Number one, the devil is and has been a murderer and a liar from the beginning. He is the father of lies. Two, Satan wants to kill and destroy you. Three, Jesus calls Satan the evil one and the enemy. Four, those who sin is from the devil or children of the devil because he has been sinning from the beginning. Now, the fifth thing that I want to say, what Jesus said about the devil is that the devil rules the evil in this world. And if you are a reborn Christian, he will come for you. He will try to stop you to do what God wants you to do, just like he did with the disciples. For example, Jesus said in Luke 22 verse 31, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan demanded to have you that he might sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned again, strengthen your brothers. You need to remember that Satan lost a war in heaven and then he came down to earth, right? He was cast out of heaven. Jesus was there. He witnessed it. A lot of people think that Jesus was only here 2000 years ago. No, he was always there from the beginning. He only came to earth in human form when he came to save us. But he saw Satan fall down from heaven to earth. Luke 10 verse 18. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Satan, the dragon of old, is here on earth to try and destroy us, to bring us with him into hell because he know he already lost. And so he is the ruler over the evil of this world. You need to understand that. Jesus said in John 14 verse 30, I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming. He has no claim on me. Jesus came to set us free from sin and also from the devil. You need to, you need to understand this because a lot of people give too much credit to the devil. Jesus died for our sins on the cross. He rose from the grave and declared victory. And we who have our faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, who walk now, live now by the Spirit in us because we are the temple of God. We now are victorious through Christ. That means that you have been set free from your sin because now with the Spirit, if you act and live in the Spirit, you will not sin. And also, the devil has no power over you when you live through the Spirit. Jesus said in John 12 verse 31, Now is the judgment of this world. Now will the ruler of this world be cast out. Those are the five top things that Jesus said about the devil that is important for us to understand. But there's one thing I want to make very clear because this is so important for you to understand. For reborn Christians, believers, children of God who have the Holy Spirit in them. You are the temple of God and the devil has no right over you. Do you understand that? Do you believe it? Because you have the power in you to rebuke the devil and he will flee from you. So he has no power over you unless you let him. If you sin, 
If you live in unrepented sin, you give the devil a foothold in your life and he can even influence you to do evil things. Even when you think you're doing good things. Peter is a very good example of this. Matthew 16 verse 23. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a hindrance to me, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. He also did the same thing to Ananias. When Ananias was asked, Ananias, why did you allow the devil to persuade you to lie to the Holy Spirit? As a reborn Christian, you should not quench or grieve the Holy Spirit. When you sin, that is exactly what you do. And you give the devil a foothold in your life. You need to live holy because God is holy. His word says we need to live holy. You need to submit to God and then you can rebuke the devil. James 4 verse 7, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will, not might, will flee from you. Now, if you want to know how to effectively fight the devil in spiritual warfare, then start by understanding how to put on the armor of God. Watch this series here. I'll see you there. Remember to subscribe if you haven't done so already. And always remember that God loves you. And I love you too.